Hello again, I'm Blunty and this is a viewer voted product review of the Nintendo DSi. I asked on my Twitter account, Bluntnate if you're interested, what you guys want reviewed next and the answer was, by a vast margin, the Nintendo DSi, the latest hardware refresh of the handheld gaming platform which seems only slightly less popular than things like breathing air and eating food. I can be pretty confident that everyone who's watching this will already be well aware of what the Nintendo DS offers, and in my recent review of a charging dock for the DSi, I received lots of people asking me if the DSi is a worthwhile upgrade for them, to splash that fat cash on if they already own a DS Lite. So I'll forego the tear down nuts and bolts basic review of the platform, and focus on what makes the DSi stand out from the previous model. Some changes are obvious right out of the box. The DSi offers a slightly larger screen and this brings obvious benefits with it. Never once have I heard uttered the words, I'm not squinting hard enough, I wish my handheld gadget had a smaller screen. The screens are the same resolution as every other DS model, this is of course to ensure compatibility across the games, but they're not that much bigger so it's not a huge improvement over the DS Lite. But it is noticeable. There's a downside too, but I'll get to that later. One of the most significant and pleasant changes is the complete overhaul of the user interface. The new menu system is a massive improvement over the old one, which always felt like a clumsy prototype to me. The new one though feels quite polished and user friendly. It's kind of a hybrid between the Nintendo Wii menu and the CoverFlow interface found on new iPods, iPhones and Apple Macs. The new interface now also means that whenever you want to set a system configuration, change applications or switch games, you don't have to do a complete system reboot like you did on the old DS's. A subtle but very welcome change. Much like the Wii before it, the DSi now has its own app store where you can buy, or in some cases download for free, applications and games purchased using Nintendo points, but irritatingly, the DSi and the Wii cannot share a common pool of Nintendo points, so you have to buy, recharge and maintain two separate account balances, which is just stupid. Why can't I have one pool of Nintendo points to use on both my DS and my Wii? The store itself navigates much the same as the Wii Shop and is every bit as sluggish. Both need a design overhaul to make the experience of browsing them faster and easier. It functions, but not elegantly. The DSi now features a built-in web browser. Well, when I say built-in, again, much like on the Wii, you have to download it separately from the App Store. At least for the moment, it's free. It works much the same as the frankly atrocious Opera browser you used to have to buy separately as a game cartridge for the old DS's, but this time around the browser has had some tweaking and fine tuning done. It now runs much faster and is easier to navigate around web pages. Feature wise for a web browser it's still pretty crippled and often annoyingly slow. It's a vast improvement but still a pretty awkward and sluggish browsing experience. Especially if like me you have an iPhone for your mobile browsing needs. There's just no comparison. You can now at long bloody last also connect to Wi-Fi networks using the much more secure WPA2 encryption scheme. So you're no longer stupidly and irresponsibly forced to run your Wi-Fi network in the vulnerable and easily compromised WEP protocol. Although annoyingly if you do connect using the secure WPA2, not a single one of your Wi-Fi enabled games will work with it. So say goodbye to online play, you can only use the WPA2 secure connection for web browsing and shopping on the App Store. So if you want to play online with your games, you still have to have at least one Wi-Fi network in your home running the vulnerable WEP protocol. Stupid. Back on the hardware changes and the power and volume sliders have been replaced with much nicer and less clunky feeling press buttons. Both have also been moved again, most thankfully the power button, as on my old DS Lite I have managed from time to time to accidentally shut off the console mid-game due to the idiotic placement and slider design of the old power switch. The CPU in the DSi also runs faster than its predecessors, but you won't notice anything in-game. At least not until DSi specific games start hitting the market to take advantage of it. For now the extra power only comes into play when you're using some of the built-in hardware and software like the cameras and the audio and picture editing tools. Which brings us neatly to the new multimedia capabilities. The two built-in cameras are both 640x480, which is a third of the one megapixel resolution of even the most basic, cheap-ass bargain basement of today's camera phones. It's utterly pathetic. The built-in software for drawing on, editing or otherwise screwing with your photos is great fun. 
for about two minutes on your first day with the DSi, then I got bored and I have never launched the application since. I'm sure it will have great appeal for anyone under the age of 12, and perhaps the groups of giggling 14 year old girls you see using those photo sticker booths in malls, but for everyone else it's a gimmicky novelty that rapidly fades in its fun factor. There's also no way to send the pics to a Wi-Fi printer, no way to email them, and no way to upload them to a service like Flickr direct from the DS. All you can do is wait till you're home, and if you don't have the DSi set to automatically save the photos there, move the files across to an SD memory card, remove the card, put it in a card reader on your computer, and then print or send them around. It's a half-assed, desperately crippled implementation that could have been so much more fun and useful. And as I review the one single downloadable game that currently makes use of the camera in-game, does it in such a parade of poorly executed mess of glitchy, unresponsive and hair-pullingly annoying bullcrappery, it makes me really fear for the future of DSi exclusive games that, like this one, try to force you to put the DSi on a table, screw around getting the angle of the screen and camera just right, and make you convulse in front of the camera like an over-medicated mental patient with an angry cat stapled to your genitals just to awkwardly and ineffectively control the goddamn game! And the camera lags so badly while you're playing, it's next to useless anyway. The same goes for the audio recording and editing functions. Useless novelties, further hampered by the fact you can only record 10 seconds at a time regardless of how much memory you have free, and just like with photos, there is absolutely no way to easily and quickly share these files with anyone else without having to dick around with a card reader and your computer. The final significant hardware change is also one of the more controversial, the complete removal of the GBA cartridge slot. Personally, I don't mind that much. It's been a long, long time since I've purchased or played a Game Boy Advance game, and replacing that slot with the more useful SD memory card slot for storing apps, games, and media, etc. is nice. But it also means you're completely out of luck if you happen to like Guitar Hero on tour and Guitar Hero Decades, because the controller peripheral for both those games uses the GBA slot, and is now rendered utterly useless and impossible to use on the DSi. But I've been told those games kinda sucked anyway, so maybe no great loss. So, on the big scale of things, should you get a DSi if you're happy with your older DS? If you can find a store doing a good trade-in deal and you have no use for the GBA slot, I say go for it. I think the App Store is the best reason to upgrade. At least it will be when it has some decent content on it. Right now the games are kinda lame, but that will improve in time, just like it did on the Wii and just like it did on the Apple App Store. One significant minus is that the larger screens, the more complex software system, and the faster CPU chip all combine in a power-sucking trio to give you battery life that is noticeably shorter than the DS Lite, and based off Nintendo's own published numbers, the difference is in excess of 5 hours less playtime on the DSi. The DSi offers some nice improvements, some of which are significant enough to warrant seriously considering an upgrade, some of which are just nice bonuses. For example, the new textured finish feels a lot nicer in your hand and isn't a fingerprint magnet like the old shiny DS Lite. But it also has a few compromises along the way. Personally, I think it's worth the upgrade, but I don't think you need to be in any rush if you've got a perfectly fine DS Lite. It'll be a little while before the advantages of the DSi are significant, like a well-stocked DSi store and the new DSi exclusive games. But sooner or later, you probably will want to step on up to the DSi. So thank you to the Twitter followers who voted to make this video possible. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it is BluntNate. I hope this video has been informative and useful to you. Catch you next time.